Well, good evening. It's April the 17th. I trust you've had a wonderful Easter day, and we want to close the day with just a brief uh, word out of the Word of God. And we're continuing our walk through the New Testament. We're in Revelation chapter 6, and I want to pick up right where we left off. In chapter 5, we saw that the Lamb was worthy, that He was the victor, and that He was Lord, and His name is Jesus. And He's able to open the seals, and let's see what happens in chapter 6. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw him hold a white horse, and he that sat upon it had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. I think we need to understand that these four horsemen that we're going to be introduced to that often get a lot of pop cultural references, they are the first four seals that the Lamb, who was slain, Jesus, is able to open. And what we see in this is that God is ultimately in complete control. And God uses these seals. And in these seals, we see that God is the ultimate power. He is providentially engaged in the affairs of man. But this is the time of tribulation and judgment. And these seals are horrible things that get opened. The white horse is seen. I... I, I remember kind of a comical situation when I was at college. We were uh, traveling with the choir, and we were at this church, and we were sitting in this college Bible study, and the guy was talking about the white horse and how Jesus was so wonderful, and somebody else was reading chapter 6, the white horse, and thought how horrible it was, and they just really miscommunicated. So pay attention to chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. We see the white horse, and ultimately we see that this white horse has, has uh, had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. You see, God is in control, and the white horse is given a power. He has the ability to conquer. And that's all he does is going forth. He wins, he rules, he crushes. The seal has been given unto this white horse, come and see. He that sat upon it had the bow. A crown was given unto him. We need to understand that deception comes from a conqueror. God allows this white horse to go out and conquer. Many people believe that this is a, a political person. Many people believe it's a spirit or some sort of demonic influence. All we know is that the white horse and he that sets upon it has the ability to conquer and goes out conquering. And ultimately, we need to be reminded it's under the control of God because Jesus, the Lamb, opens the seal. Verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, And when he'd opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power is given in him that sat upon it to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. You see, destruction is really inevitable, isn't it? Outside of belonging to the victor, death is certain. Outside of belonging to the victor, destruction is at the door. And the red horse has the power to bring about destruction. If the white horse represents deception, the red horse represents destruction. And unto him was given a great sword. And he takes peace from the earth. And people kill one another. When I was in high school, I was told by my history teacher that he believed there were 634 years of human history where there was not a war going on. He later said something to the effect that that number was probably closer to 214. As we moved through the class, he suggested that perhaps the historians were wrong because he had a hard time finding any time where wars weren't present. May I remind you that wars have always happened. And the reality is, is that we're living in a time of war right now. But nothing that will compare to what will happen. He will take peace from the earth. And people will go about killing one another. And unto him was given a great sword, a symbolic sword. Maybe a real sword. Issuing out destruction. Let's look at verses 5 and 6. We see not only deception and destruction, but we now see deprivation, the black horse. He opens the third seal, verse 5, and I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat upon it had a pair of balances in his hands. 
And I heard a voice from the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. I want to challenge you today to understand the significance of this. Deprivation. Famine is unstoppable. And famine ultimately is unbearable. We live in a culture today, middle of April, that is whining and complaining about the high cost of the grocery store. But at least we got grocery stores. There's coming a time of deprivation where a measure of wheat for a penny, that's a day's work for a handful of wheat. Three measures of barley for a day's work. And see that thou do not hurt the oil and the wine. Be careful. Famine like unimaginable is headed towards planet Earth. The first seal represents deception. The second seal, destruction. The third seal, deprivation. And finally, verses 7 and 8 tell us about the pale horse. And when he'd opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat upon it was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Now again, we see this growing catastrophe from deception to destruction to deprivation to death. The the cyclical effect. We're, we're deceived by the enemy. And then ultimately he starts to destroy. And then because of death and uh, disease and pestilence, famine occurs. And then ultimately death, a large death. Death is controlled by him. Look what he says. I, I looked and he had death and hell followed him and given him the power over one fourth part of the earth. God is still in control. Death is measured. But notice it is comprehensive. He would kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Notice again, the previous seals have been opened. Deception, destruction, depravation. Death uses all of those things and even the beast of the field to kill. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, the first four seals, paint a terrible picture of the future. But notice what happens as we move into the fifth seal, verse 9. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwells on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. It should be said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. This is an incredible picture as the fifth seal is opened. I saw the altars of the souls of them which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony that they held. We understand that justice is before God. Yet God is, for whatever reason, deferring that justice. How long, O Lord, how long will it be? But ultimately, verse 11 teaches us that God is still in control. That they should be killed as they were Until that time, it should be fulfilled. I think it's important to be reminded that in the day of the Lamb's wrath, white robes will be given to them. I don't understand. I've never really been put in a situation where I would have to choose life or death because of service to the Lord Jesus. But many have. Oh, Lord, they just want mercy. They want justice. The wrath of the Lamb is coming, and the fifth seal gives us this picture of saints who are seeking justice. But notice verse 12. And I beheld, and he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. See, one of the reasons I don't believe the book of Revelation is telling something that happened in the past is this has never happened. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. 
And the heavens departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I believe there will be a literal great earthquake that will rock the world as the fifth seal is opened. Uh, pardon me, the sixth seal is opened. The wrath of the Lamb, this great earthquake, will level mountains. It will move islands. It will cast a spur. The scroll of the heavens will roll back and stars will seem to disappear. The fig, they're just, it, a cataclysmic event will take place. And we're just at the sixth seal, the first round of judgment. Heaven is crying out for you to repent now. Come to Jesus now. Notice verses 15 through 17 with me. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? In the day of the Lamb's wrath, saints will desire justice. Science will declare judgment. And sinners will try to hide from the judge. As we move into the judgment section, as the scene shifts from heaven to the pain of being on earth following the rapture of the church, living through this horrific time of judgment. As the scrolls are opened, Jesus is still worthy. Notice what they say. They, they want to hide from he that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? Oh, friend, I pray that you're not living in this time. Come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus now. Please go to our website, fbc-sellersburg.org. At the top, there's a link to the gospel. The judgments that are coming, the pain the world will absorb because they've turned their back on God is great and horrific. Come to Jesus. Father, I pray that your word would penetrate hearts and speak to us. Give us wisdom that we might serve you. Lord, cause people to repent. Help them to see the truthfulness of their desire not to experience the wrath of the Lamb. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you.